For the most part in our lives, we live our lives based on false causes. We strongly believe that the events in our life have an impact on how we feel. That is not true. When it comes to leadership, my angle of attack is always, if you want to lead people first, you've got to be able to lead yourself. Because this is a prerequisite, without that, nothing's going to work. You may learn techniques, how to lead people, etc. Uh, you're going to fall short. But then again, and I'd like, you to involve you, I'd like to involve you a little bit, what is the most crucial question that anybody ever asked you? Do you remember that? A question that took your breath away, you didn't find the answer, but it somehow opened up a new space. For me, this question was by an Indian master, the question, and it's a pretty well-known question, they ask in all those great religions worldwide, who am I? Again, I didn't have the answer. The answer I did come up with was something that most people would like to express. And that is something that we learned. You yourself are not who you think you are. And this was also true for me, because the uh, things I came up with, like uh, nationality, religion, profession, hobbies, favorite obsessions, you name it, fan or supporter of a specific uh, football club, whatever. This is called our identities. We are identified with these things. And whenever people challenges us, this is a stimulus response game going on here, we feel frustrated, uh, we re react with stress, etc., etc. This is called the ego. So most people define themselves by their ego. Ego is, let me define it, mind functioning for its own survival. So the only true game that the ego has is recording whatever experiences come up in our lives, especially those with a high emotional impact, then all these recordings have just one thing to accomplish to ensure our survival, and we always want to be right at all times. This is what the ego is all about, functioning for its own survival. What is mind? Mind is a linear arrangement of multi-century successive moments of now. Let me repeat that. Our mind is a linear arrangement of multi-century successive moments of now. So we did register on our recorder each and every moment of now, 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 now. And this runs the life of most of us. Mind runs the show. You are not there. And it takes something as an impact from the outside of this box to be aware of it. You cannot use your thoughts or your thinking in order to get out of this box. So we need to experience something that gives us a feeling of being out of our minds. We all know these events like falling in love or having a fate, an experience that happens to us that we cannot put in any of our recordings that we uh, put in order to. So, uh, this impact comes from outside. What keeps people in this box? Because you might say, why don't we go just out of it? Well, it's just fear. Fear is the basic that keeps us from living the lives we would love to live. Because love is the death of ego. Where there is ego, there's never love. Where there's love, there is no ego. Just the other way around. So what kind of fear is it? Well, the most sort of emotion of a human being is belonging. We share 
96.8% of our genes were chimpanzees. So we are definitely animals. So what makes us humans? What makes us humans is we are aware of that. We are aware of being animals. No animal can really do this. So there must be something that this awareness is based on, and it's called the self. This is who you and I really are. Out of self, we can be conscious. No animal can be conscious of itself. Here, we are dividable in many traits, characteristics, ambitions, etc. So, as self, we are an individual, which means not dividable. So, if you want to lead yourself, first off, you got to be able, uh, if you want to lead people, you've got to be able to lead yourself, first off. What gets us stuck here? Like fear and old habits die very hard. So it's fear and old habits at the end of the day. We adore those people who dare leaving this cage. For example, to Hayadal, who proved that you can float with a papyrus float uh, from this southern American border or coastline all the way to the Polynesian Islands. And there's a quote in the Bigby Museum in Oslo, projected on the white wall, day and night, where his uh, Contiki is exhibited. And the quote reads like this, Borders, I have never seen any, but I know they exist in the minds of some people. So the only borders that you and I really know, and we have to confess that, is just in our head. Janis Joplin, problems are just inside your head, she said to me. So, out of self, we can not only be conscious, out of self, um, we can display discipline. Let me give an example. Mr. Bond, Goldfinger, he follows Goldfinger and his golden Rolls Royce in the Swiss Alps, and suddenly he, get, he gets passed by a beautiful lady in a convertible. And macho man as he is, stimulus response, he pushes the gas pedal. And suddenly you see him holding his breath, laying back and saying to himself, discipline, 007, discipline. Discipuli is the scholar. So the ego must be the servant. But for most people, like I said, mind runs the show. This is the master. And that's why you do not run your life. This is automatic pilot. We are good soldiers, if you want to put it this way. So, out of self, and please remember this, uh, uh, the purpose of life is written on the Apollo Temple in Delphi. Realize yourself. Self-realization is the purpose of life. I cannot go deep into this right now. It takes too much time. But then again, please make the distinction between the self and the ego. So, self-realization is what our purpose is, and for me, the most important here is self-responsibility. So, out of self, we are able to respond. Please mind, the English language is made of German and French words, some Celtic. So, the German selbst, here we have the French respondre, which means to answer, habilité, French, ability. So, if you do not want just to react in life, you have to go to this stage. What does that look like? I mean, how can we exactly do this? This is the river of life. And the river of life, sure enough, brings events. Events like 29 degrees, pretty hot today in Cologne. You and I, we sit at the bank of this river, watching life passing us by. Question is, can we really see what's going on in life? Well, of course not, because we all look through a lens. What color does the lemon have when you wear blue glasses? They are still yellow, but you cannot see it because you have blue glasses, right? <laughs> so this is the ego that distracts our perception. This is why the beauty is always in the eyes of the beholder. What exactly is this distraction made of? 
Well, it's made of our expectations, hopes, wishes, and fears. So whatever comes down the river of life has to go through this judgmental process. A disappointment is always the relief of a wrong expectation. Disappointments are preceded by expectations. Whose expectations? Mine. Who is responsible for my expectations? I am. Who is responsible for all your disappointments? You are. Sorry, guys. Bad news. <laughs> we do not make the distinction between e event and experience. Most people strongly believe that what they experience is happening. And that's not true. Let me give you an example. Those who have a pen and a paper ready, let's do a little experiment here. I give you a sentence for a couple of seconds. All I want you to do is just copy it, all right? Without looking on your neighbor's paper. Here it comes. And drop your pen. Now, don't look at your neighbor's. Look at it again. Some did never see the second there because you registered one and you just needed one. Some had an I where I don't have one. But your mind goes, there's got to be one. Old habit tells you X, Y, Z. No, this is you. Okay? So what you have on your papers is reality. And this is the truth. And truth is never reality. We always got to make this distinction. So back here. <coughs> All our hopes, wishes and fears interfere with what we experience. That's why perception is everything. If our perception is not correct, how can we decide the correct things to do? Imagine two guys sitting in a car, listening to the radio, and the radio plays Julio I, or Iglesias, or in, uh, his son, Enrique. <laughs> One of the guys feels great because he fed in love listening to Iglesias' music. So he goes, wow, this is going to be my... This makes my day. The other guys... The other guy doesn't like that song because his wife loves Iglesias. Even in bed she once said, oh, Julio. <laughs> so here's my question. For the mood of these, the very different mood of these two guys, what has Iglesias to do with that? Answer, of course, nothing at all. So please check it out. For the most part in our lives, we live our lives based on false causes. We strongly believe that the events in our life have an impact on how we feel. That is not true. Imagine you go on holiday in Mallorca, do you expect sunshine, getting a nice tan, being on the beach every day? Fact is, it's raining all those two weeks. And you turn back home saying, the weather spoiled my holiday. <laughs> no, that's not true. The weather was just the weather. Right? So you are, ex again, we are responsible, able to respond to what's happening in our lives. And as um, soon as we are aware of this, some things suddenly pop up that we never saw this way. And this is what I want to give you a little bit here. Is it possible that we don't see the world the way we should? Perception is everything. Happiness. For example, one of the questions I always asked when I was with these wise people, the answer to the question, what is happiness, is very simple. Happiness is a function of accepting what is. The very moment you take the world the way it is, you are happy. Here in Cologne, they go, um, <laughs> it could be, it could, right? <laughs> okay, so the yes, the the yes to what's going on in life is very, very important. That does not mean now I agree with it or I like it now. No, no, no. You don't put any label anymore. 
because nobody and nothing and in this world has any meaning at all until you and I come along and label it. We got to be very, very aware of we label events. Events have no meaning. Nothing and nobody can make you happy. That is impossible. If you go, bo, 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 hang on, my husband makes me very happy. No, that's not true. Sorry. Your husband meets your expectations, hopes, and wishes. And in 10 years from now, you might go, whoa, now he turns me so sad. He doesn't make me happy anymore. No, lost in translation. The correct translation would run, he's not ready to meet my expectations, hopes, and wishes anymore. That is the fact, right? I know we don't have the time, but <laughs> maybe you want to contemplate on this a little bit. Nothing and nobody can make us happy. Let me give you the, uh, the formula for unhappiness. Here it comes, just one sentence. The death of happiness is comparison. So if you don't, if you feel so great, like you've never been before, and you want to feel happy, uh, unhappy again, all you do is compare what's going on with what you would expect and hope and wish, wish happiness is gone. The death of happiness is always comparison. Now, how does that translate into a world that we all strive for success? Just to, let me give you a little example. Success is, as the word already reads it, succès in French, succès in Italian, obviously something that's in a successive row. That's the German word Erfolg as well. So success is what follows when you follow yourself. Success is not reaching a goal. When you reach a goal, the real feeling is relief. The fear is gone. You are not happy when you reach a goal because you're in a position that is called ho vacui. You, you are in a position that you look into an abyss and that's why you keep creating goals and goals and goals and goals again. In the words of Buddha, there is no road to happiness because happiness is the road. Or let me quote uh, Stevenson. Um, to travel, hopefully, is better to, than to arrive. So, in order to be in a mood of achieving to be happy, which is you are focused on your goal, why don't you go for happily achieving? Then you, you enjoy each and every day. All right, time's running fast, 20 seconds left. <laughs> I hope these guys are correct with the watch. Is that possible? 20 minutes gone? Okay. There's a great quote I would love to give you in the end. Scorer is God. So, here's the quote. And when the great big scorer comes to write against your name, he writes not you won or lost, but how you played the game. So, I just wanted to give you some impulses on how to play the game another way, right? I hope this is a little bit food for thought for you for the break now and hopefully someday uh, I invite you to do this. Uh, you can join me in one of my workshops in order to put more foot on all these uh, provocations. Okay, thank you very much and keep the fire burning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dieter Lange. Thank you.